All right, let's get into it, guys. We got The Direct. Are Star Wars fans turning on Dave Filoni by Russ Milhelm posted today? Like I said, it was three hours ago now, maybe four. The once beloved, not by all of us, Star Wars filmmaker. And he's not even a filmmaker. He's more of an animator, dude. He hasn't made a film yet, actually. So that's a, there's one fallacy right from the get-go, five words in. The once beloved Star Wars filmmaker, Dave Filoni, might now be falling out of grace with the fan base that once loved him. Shout out, RK Outpost, United Spacers Alliance, OG Star Wars, Knights of Melvin, and any and everyone that's been calling this fucker out from day one. And I know Ryan like took a lot of heat. He was probably him and Tim and I think Laura were probably all some of the first. But yeah, shout out to them, dude, doing the Lord's work. And I'm here to pile on and so is all the other members of the Gatekeepers Alliance. We're going to get into it. Filoni has been a massive creative force behind Star Wars for two decades now. Uh, I would don't know if I would call it a creative force. He's a massive plagiarist. I mean, he's a master bastardizer. He can't write stories within the framework of a built universe. He has to change shit to his liking in order to make it fit. Putting aside the specific projects he's created, notice the Clone Wars, Rebels, Bad Batch, etc. The man has added some of the most crucial lore the franchise has ever known. Lore? I've already dropped my one video. Disney hates the Sith. They have one fucking holocron and all of Disney Star Wars. So don't tell me how he's built the lore and shit, all right? And I don't even know Jedi holocrons. I haven't even got into that shit. He hasn't really built crucial lore anywhere. Also, you notice Clone Wars, Rebels, Bad Batch. What they don't mention, of course, they're not going to mention things like Star Wars Resistance. That is a Dave Filoni project. Star Wars Resistance. That is his baby. He's, he's the creative on that thing. Oh, he wasn't really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was involved, dude. He was the one who fucking made it. In fact, he got credit for it. He was also the mentor of Leslie Headland. Leslie Headland says Dave Filoni was a mentor in making the Acolyte, and he guided her to include witches that weren't Night Sisters. Dave Filoni very quickly became kind of a mentor of mine in terms of navigating what this part of the timeline would be like for both the Jedi and other Force users. It was kind of an aha moment for me when he told me, you know, not all witches are Night Sisters. Here, just in case people have sight problems, Leslie Headland says Dave Filoni was a mentor in making the Acolyte, and that he got her to include witches that weren't night sisters. He's made a bunch of other bullshit too. What about here? Here's a list of Disney Plus shows right here, right? Obi-Wan Kenobi. He wasn't officially announced, but he had already gotten the title of CCO before Kenobi. Vision, that was outsourced, so none of that they would even get credit for, and a lot of it has some weird shit. Tales of the Jedi, they plagiarized. Like I said, he's a master of plagiarism. They plagiarized the EU Tales of the Jedi title and then did time periods that didn't even have anything to do with Tales of the Jedi. You guys know that because we've been reading Tales of the Jedi that's 5,000 years prior to the Skywalker saga. And of course, we made it about Ahsoka. And there have been times when we wanted to use things from the EU, and I was like, yeah, but we can't use it that way. So I don't want to use it and change it. You know, I don't want to use it and make it something completely different. That's rude. How rude. Book of Boba Fett. He was heavily involved in that too with John Favreau. We got the freaking Vespa crew and all that nonsense. There's Resistance. There's Rebels. Rebels is not as good. Again, we had to resurrect Maul, who was already fucking dead, but we can't write in, in the confines of the story, so we had to bring Maul back in, in Clone Wars. Clone Wars, people will tout as good. Do you remember the Martez sisters? Because they were fucking trash, and there was four episodes dedicated to them, and then they leaked into all the other content as well. And then we have Anbor. You can credit that just to Tony Gilroy is sucking. And then we have the Bad Batch. And the Bad Batch was pointless. I was covering Bad Batch the same time I was covering X-Men 97. And X-Men 97 had plot threads they were moving forward with very quickly, actually. And they were condensing in 20 book comic arcs into one episode, but actually making it coherent and paying homage to the source material. This guy told a story that you probably could have told in three or four episodes and stretched those episodes out, dude. And it was nonsense. And then bastardized things like the Planet Merker, the Vornskers, and one thing after another, after another, after another. We had a Sarlacc that was like a plant Sarlacc on another planet that was in like a freaking like lake or something like that, as opposed to a Sarlacc being in a desert. He's been doing lots of all this crap. Uh, he was also involved in this shit. And yeah, this is Melvin's thing right here. Forces of Destiny, executive producer, Dave Filoni. He loves the strong whammon. Feminist propaganda in 
17. So he's responsible for that as well. And then look at, I mean, does that look like a guy who's civil warring with Kathleen Kennedy? They look like they're having a grand old fucking time right there. Melvin pointing out facts here. Want everyone to keep in mind, Dave Filoni loves the acolyte. He loves Leslie Headland. They even did a sit down together talking about, oh, you know, this, this, that, and the other and how great each other were. He's also fully supported the show, everything about it. He is the chief creative officer. He's to blame 100%. He's always been trash. And what did he, well, we'll get, we'll get back into it. Let me read more of the article. I know I kind of went on a tangent already. Uh, okay, here we go. He created the beloved Ahsoka Tano. Now, I will say a lot of people didn't like Ahsoka in the beginning. A lot of people never liked Ahsoka. She did actually have an arc, but again, it fucked up a lot of the lore and the continuity, which is what I'm about. But then he had to resurrect her because again, he can't work in the confines of his own writing. He should have died to Vader and said, hey, let's resurrect her. So we got resurrected Maul, resurrected Ahsoka. Everybody's coming back to life. She got resurrected fucking three times. She got resurrected in the Mortis arc by the sister. She got resurrected again in the world between worlds. And she got resurrected again when she fell off a fucking cliff in the water and entered the world between worlds, which is not how you enter the world between worlds. We had to change that canon too to make it convenient writing. And she learned how to breathe underwater for fucking however long and meet Anakin Skywalker in the world between worlds. She's like a cat. She's got like nine lives. He created the beloved Ahsoka Tano, helped properly flesh out the prequel era. That's a big lie and a big misconception. That show does not flesh out the prequel era. The Clone Wars multimedia project and other projects, prequel books like Labyrinth of Evil, books after Revenge of the Sith like Dark Lord, Rise of Darth Vader. That's what fleshed out the prequel era. He he helped properly flesh out the prequel era. Better Anakin Skywalker's fall to the dark side. No, the Revenge of the Sith novelization does that. It does an immaculate job of showing and highlighting Anakin's fall to the dark side. Gives you extra shit on Dooku. Gets more into the political. And they don't like, we don't like politics, right? The fake politics. And no, we like the actual Star Wars politics. And they had lots of stuff with Bail Organa and Padme and shit going on behind the scenes that wasn't in the movie. Expanded the mythology of the Force and so much more. He did not expand the expanded universe expanded the mythology of the force. I'm going to stop right here for a minute because we're going to show you continuity of the Clone Wars multimedia project before the Clone Wars. This is all of the Clone Wars multimedia project, right? And then you have other projects um, and, the, and then they're the projects that connect with all those stories. Boom, 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 right? You got the Republic comics, you got Legacy of the Force. So we have this timeline right here. We got Revenge of the Sith. We have everything and this is how everything connects right and that's the thing people just go oh you know like eth koth uh, eth koth fucking got retcon and i have pablo hidalgo's i did a video on it it was um, i'll have to look i'll link to it but eth koth died in attack of the clones that's g cannon folks he retconned the g cannon and he knew leland chi told him not to do it and he fucking did it anyways and that's in the essential readers companion now it just doesn't matter right now pablo's turned a new leaf and now he doesn't all the continuity and lore he used to defend in star wars insider magazine and in that essential companion reader and all that and all that's down by the wayside now none of that shit matters right anyways he destroys all this continuity here's the continuity after tcw boom see all this shit no 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 all this shit now doesn't fit doesn't work there's retcons all over the place that's why i've been labeling him retcon loney and that's exactly what he did due to tcw now if you're disconnecting all these stories from all these other ones how is that enhancing the lore how is that enhancing star wars how is that making the prequels better it's not you're fucking everything up it's like i said tcw is the thought bomb of the expanded universe. It literally is. Because what do you have after continuity wise when you pull all this shit out? This is what you're left with after the Clone Wars drops. This is all that you have left. You have the Bane novels, which they already have Shogun looking Bane. Like they haven't even gotten to work on Bane. I'm sure they're going to fuck Bane up too. Tales of the Jedi, I guess, is untouched, but, but they've already hijacked the name for one of their own shows. And then you have the movies and everything else. This is all courtesy of Dave Filoni. Just thought I would point that out. Let's go ahead and continue. The Tide might be turning against Dave Filoni. Recently, there's been a shift among many fans regarding the reputation of Star Wars filmmaker Dave Filoni, turning the tide against the once revered creator. Again, they're painting a certain picture. On social media, the negative sentiment against Filoni isn't hard to find. As X, formerly Twitter user Cody Fandom, I don't know who that is, pointed out in the comment section of a post from the Direct, there's a quote, a bunch of people who've turned their backs on Dave entirely. So I don't know, that guy could still be pro Filoni. I don't know what he's pointing out. For example, user Dirty Old a Shaman feels very strongly against Filoni's time with Star Wars currently, going as far as to claim that, quote unquote, he's lived long enough to become the villain. 
Kathleen. So I guess his whole quote is Dave turned his back on us. He's on board with Kathleen. So this guy's probably a civil war believer, right? He thought it was the civil war between Filoni and Favreau and Kathleen Kennedy. And if not, I'm not putting words in your mouth. Uh, it just kind of sounds like where you're coming from because everybody thinks Kathleen's the main problem. It's it's everywhere, dude. The whole place. You'd have to bomb your house like you're exterminating rodents. That's what you would have to do to circus film and start all over. Dave turned his back on us. He's on board with Kathleen. He praised Hedlund and signed off on this long, along with all the terrible decisions on The Mandalorian. Okay. Ahsoka and Book of Boba Fett. He's lived long enough to become the villain. Time for an entire leadership change. Okay. Yeah, you're singing my tune. But fuck an entire leadership change. Wipe them out. All of them. Alongside the announcement of Dave Filoni co-writing The Mandalorian and Grogu, ex-user, that Star Wars girl, shout out Anna, complained that the movie will surely be filled with plot holes. <laughs> so it's going to be filled with plot holes, lore-breaking tropes, and random wolves. Yay! And Anna knows this because Dave Filoni is a wolf sexual. He's really into these wolves. He's really into Ahsoka. A little too much. You know, de-aging Barriss Offy. You know, the guy's fucking a weirdo, dude. All right, let's get back to the article again at hyperbeam.bnb declared that season three fell off pretty hard and that's the general consensus a lot of us have picked apart seasons one and two especially season two with all the jangling keys quote unless din Djarin ends up making a new dark saber and is the one to ride the mythosaur then i don't know man season three fell off pretty hard end quote at samuel stark 93 pointed specifically to the failings of the acolyte while falling out feloni i think he means calling out feloni when responding to the harsh feedback after the acolyte in the last few years don't blame them. Wait, pointed out specifically to the families calling out Filoni when responding to the harsh feedback after the acolyte in the last few years. Don't blame them. So he's saying not to blame Filoni. I don't get it. Uh, while it might seem odd to blame Filoni for the acolyte, and it still kind of is, it's not odd at all. The reasoning for that is because a filmmaker is a chief creative officer. How the fuck is that weird? It may be odd that we blame the person on top that signs off, which means he does have final approval of the scripts. How is that weird? Are you stupid, dude? How old is this guy? Who is this guy? What's your name? Russ Milhelm. You're, you're not making any sense, Russ. Reread this sentence and get back to me. It may seem odd to blame Filoni. The reasoning is that he's the chief creative officer of fucking Lucasfilm. I mean, geez, bro. Come on. Is the hate for Dave Filoni reasonable? It is interesting to see a new parallel unfold as fans' reactions to Dave Filoni's recent material does mirror the general reception of Star Wars creator George Lucas's later work in the series. Wrong. Here we go again. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. The prequels, rah, the prequels are all fucking S tier. It was the media, the stuck up corporate media. It was the critics, the elitist critics. George Lucas raged against the machine. George Lucas created Star Wars, an indie movie with his own fucking money. He created Empire Strikes Back, an indie movie with his own money. He raged against the Hollywood machine. He didn't want to do their way. He did it his way. And people got butthurt over Ewoks. You've heard me talk about it before. I love the Ewoks. <laughs> Wookiees, wow, Wookiees are great. Wookiees are enslaved. They they get slaughtered on Kashyyyk at the end of episode three. They're enslaved when you play KOTOR. The no grief take them out as well during Heir to the Empire. They get, I like Wookiees too. I'm just saying people think this movie was going to be great if it would have been Wookiees instead of Ewoks and blah, blah. Dude, episode six is one of the greatest fucking endings to a trilogy or to a saga one through six ever. That throne room scene is epic. That shit on Jabba's barge and the whole, all the shit with Jabba, Han and the Carbonite. It's all awesome, dude. The space battle over it. The movie is, go back and watch the movie. I mean, I don't I don't know what people are seeing, but whatever. But again, this is faux bullshit. It was not the fans. Yeah, there's something. Everyone in my circles, friends, family, people I knew, people I encountered in the comic book store, I didn't hear anyone bitching and complaining about prequels. People were fired up. People loved them. This guy's probably in his 20s writing about history that he wasn't even alive to experience. While Lucas was renowned for the original trilogy, he quickly fell out of favor 
culture with most fans. No, most. Wrong. Another fallacy. Most fans as the prequel trilogy was released. Ironically, that's when Dave Filoni first experienced his rise to the Star Wars world with his beloved work on The Clone Wars. From there, he went on to craft another beloved animated series, Star Wars Rebels. Well, where are all those people? Because I will say The Clone Wars did have a bigger following, but then you got an even smaller following with Rebels, and then The Mandalorian did well, and that kind of fell off too. And then when you go to the Ahsoka show, it's an even smaller following. The show Rebels is a niche group, okay? So how could it be beloved if there's not that many people beloving it? There's a way more people that saw the prequel trilogy that allegedly these fools are saying hated it than there were any of these movies. I think Adjusted for Inflation and New Hope still like the number two movie of all time behind like Gone with the Wind. From there, he went on to craft another beloved animated series, Rebels. He was even partially involved in the Mandalorian season. So there's another fucking travesty from Filoni content would save the franchise from following the abysmal reaction to Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. No, the Mandalorian made everybody put rose-colored glasses on after Episode Nine because they're like, oh, thank God, this like kind of feels like Star Wars. It looks like it. We're back on Tatooine. There's lots of uh, familiarity and stuff. We have like um, fucking Stormtroopers, Salacious Crumb. We have, we have different things that make you nostalgic for the OT and shit. So those people the people that were prequel haters oh it's the ot mandalorian's the greatest da, da, da. if you go back and rewatch them all trust me you'll it, it'll be a little different now especially now that phony's been feloni's been exposed there's not to say there's not to, that's not to say that there isn't room for criticism when it comes to dave feloni's star wars work while his mythology can be really intriguing his written dialogue is lacking at points his dialogue his mythology sucks he i just went over he retconned all kinds of shit that's not creating mythology that's trampling over the existing mythology but one thing is clear. He's extremely passionate about fucking up the fran- or sorry. He's extremely passionate about the franchise and knows his stuff. Yeah, he knows his stuff so much that he can't write in the confines of the universe or he wants to purposely fuck it all up. It's hard to see how that's a bad thing for Star Wars at this point. No, it's not. After all, the first footage of the Mandalorian and Grogu looked pretty damn promising. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think Anna pretty much called that one out correct. The Mandalorian and Grogu is set to hit theaters at some point in 2026. I always call that December. They'll cancel it in the early though push it back push it back push it back while dave filoni's ahsoka season two is in development hopefully it gets stuck in development so there we go but you know what the filoni faithful there they'll be out a lot of them already like this new show the filoni faithful are like oh look at the the groomer crew it's looking really good man liking the way this show's looking i'm not gonna hold my breath that, that's for damn sure that's all i got for today guys thanks for watching if you like this video please like subscribe and share this out to any and everyone that you think is interested in real star wars and real marvel content until next time see you later